Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 1484. 1484. I'm your host, Mike Matthews. I rock. Kinda. I sponge. No, I rock. I think that would be the better. It's the last place on earth, cafe anyway, is where I am broadcasting from now. Mike's Daily Podcast. Today we hear from Mike's Daily Podcast. John Deere, the engineer, Floyd, the floor man, Shelly Schuhart. I am going to now take my boot off. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's a big boot and it is attached to my foot with Velcro and I couldn't find anything that rhymed with sexual harassment yesterday, don't you know? Except for, I don't know if you caught the name of the show yesterday was Adamant. Like the guy from the 80s that's saying, don't drink, don't smoke, what do you do? Mike's Daily Podcast. Must be something inside. What was that? Goody Two Shoes. And he also sang, Mike's In a time like these, Daily With a great heaven knows, Podcast. When we wish we didn't have, Yeah! Quite so many clothes. So let's loosen up with a playful tease. Like the people did through the centuries We're just following ancient history If I strip for you, would you strip for me? God, I loved that song in the 80s Oh, Speaking of stripping, Judy Greer She strips down as an actress To the bare, raw essence You could walk in Of the character She is one of the voices on Archer she shows up in an episode of Portlandia in the recent season. And I'm so happy because in the past year, she's been so thin on Arrested Development. She's so thin. She's the, uh, the woman with the glasses, the secretary to the Jeffrey Tambor character. Look who else walked in. And she's gained some weight. I'm so happy. I know that was a pressing issue that you were really concerned about, as was I. But Judy Greer has gained weight. She may have even had a baby. I don't know. But she definitely looked more healthy. Healthy is a good thing. As she played the lesbian lover of Carrie Brownstein on Portlandia. Several people have walked in. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Jolly Stewart, the shop supervisor. I love Carrie Brownstein. Yeah, you know, she's like in a rock band and... She was in what? What? The Sleener Kitty? Is that the band? And here's today's podcast picture. Hey, did you know that the uh, Portugal the Man song, "Feel It Still," that you hear all over the radio now, it's crossed over from the alternative charts to the pop charts. Ooh, I'm a rebel just for kicks now. I've been doing it since 1986 now. So that song, my friend Sylvia, who's the only listener to the show, she says that song is a ripoff of, uh, uh, was it, wait a minute, Mr. Postman, or was it the other one? My mama told me, you better shop around. One of those, it, she thinks, Portugal the Man stole from that song, but whatever, it's a good song. I'm, I would much rather listen the, to that song than half the crap that's on the radio these days. Ugh! God, I know I sound old as crap, but I'm really, I really wish auto tune was never invented. It's just, I thought it might go away. It was a fad, but it's still sticking around. And uh, look, who else is here? Hi, Mike. This is Floyd the Floorman, and this is John Deere the Engineer. We both enjoy Judy Greer as well. Mm-hmm. Judy Greer, she's got that voice. She's actually, oh, she was the wife in Ant Man, the ex-wife. In the house where of uh, the there was the, the big showdown takes place and she's in that but she she pops up all over the place so okay now that we talked about her I would like to mention uh, the, the today is going to be the last day that Warren Alney's show broadcasts over radio waves he is now going to be podcast only I've been talking about this all week and this past week he has been revisiting topics. That he hit in the first year of broadcasting, which was in uh, his show, To The Point, began in 2000. And he plays little clips from the year 2000. My friend, that was so long ago. Yeah, it was 17 years ago, but it was so long ago. 
technology wise and you know some years like if you compared 1992 to 1982 yeah there there were some differences in fashion grunge was emerging in 92 in 1982 it was men at work the police sting was still with the police there was uh the the uh you know people with their pink clothes on what was it pink houses was that out yet by john mellencamp it was right john mellencamp jack and diane i know was in 1982 but there wasn't too much of a difference it's so different from those 17 years from 2000 to 2017 in 2000 we didn't have twitter yet believe it or not we didn't have facebook we didn't even have MySpace yet. MySpace was, I think, a year or two later. Uh, we we had Google, but that was just getting started. They didn't have their Gmail yet. It, it was j- just beginning as a search engine. I think people were still searching more on this platform. But, yeah, it was a whole other world. He plays clips from it like, uh, uh, what was it? Oh, the Millennium. The countdown to the millennium, New Year's Eve, two thousand, and just the—it was just such a different world. Uh, uh, Larry King was on CNN hosting the the New Year's Eve show. Well, Dick Clark was still around, and there was still uh, John Stewart on the Daily Show, and just it was pre nine eleven. It was just a different world. So my point being, I have a doppelganger. Sylvia, my only listener, she sent me a picture via text because that's how we are. Actually, you can text me at 336-MM-DAILY. Text charges apply, but 336-MM-DAILY, and you can call me there, too, to cafe anyway. And she sent a picture of a guy on a treadmill from behind, and he wears a cap like I do. And she's like, that's your doppelganger. And I'm like, hey, that's the first time someone hasn't sent me a picture of some... Grossly ugly fellow That Just Oh Mike This guy looks like you And I'm like Thanks that I look like That gross fat guy No judgment But he's fat And he's gross And ugh Ugh. No I'm sure he's wonderful In his soul The guy on the treadmill Though He looked pretty good I'll be compared to that Thank you Sylvia Very nice of you so it was a different world back then. I began podcasting in 2009. Actually, I think maybe the very last week of 2008. So technically, it was. It's been. It's been a long time. So podcasting was really not. It was nothing in 2000. It wasn't. It didn't exist yet. And here we are, and it's all about podcasting and Twitter. If your company's not doing both of those. You're 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 not going to be viable. Uh, it's it's a whole other world. So, my point being that I found my Samsung phone. Um, my phone. I love Samsung. I was all about the iPhone for a while, and the iPhone X and all that. I I could care less about. Although there is a story about them today. I love Samsung because I've always loved the way they make it so easy to do what you want to do. Some people go, oh, no, it's too complicated. No, 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 no. The fact that they make it complicated because they make it simple. <laughs> now I sound like one of those public speakers, those uh, people that speak to your company. It's all about synergy. It's all about getting complicated to be simple, to find this simple path. Now I'm getting all Buddhist. But hey, here's the thing. My Samsung phone, I love because I can do so many things, so many more things that I, than I could with my iPhone. One of the things is you can add memory to a Samsung phone. You can't do that to an iPhone. If you want to add memory, you got to pay another 200 bucks. By the way, the guy that I do the show for, uh, he always touts Apple. He loves Apple. He's got stock in Apple. So he's always talking about Apple, 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 the best thing ever. But he even admitted every phone that Samsung comes out with is another $200 more. So now we're at the iPhone 10, which it, and I'm going to say iPhone X just to piss him off. Uh, the iPhone X is now a thousand dollars. And when the phone comes out after that, you know, it's going to be who 
The only the rich elite can afford those stupid phones anyway. Cafe anyway. Yesterday I had the honor of anyway cafe anyway anyway of producing a show that's pretty popular in the Bay Area. It's heard on four radio stations throughout the Bay Area. Actually, three in the Bay Area and then one in Monterey Bay. And he does a, a car show. And can I just tell you, this guy, so positive, so up. So I, I loved doing his show. The guy I usually do the show for, he's dark. He's, every day is a chore for him. He talks about money. And I actually produce a couple of shows about money. Uh, there's th- this other guy too, and they're both like they talk about money, and they, it gets it's so over my head. And I'm not the dumbest light bulb in the socket. I think that's how that expression is. If you're talking to me and talking over my head, then who the hell is listening? You've got to you've got to dumb it down, especially if you're on the radio waves. And people have so many choices. Podcasts, you can be a lot more specific. You can, that's the whole thing about podcasts. You can niche it up. You can get right into that one category, the subcategory of sports. I, you can talk about cricket and be specific about cricket. Specific about cricket. That's the name of my new band. And that is what, but they talk about money and it's blah. I don't know what they're saying. And I've been doing their show now for two years. And I've picked up a lot of things, but the, oh gosh, and he, it's just so dark and so dry. And it was so fun to have this guy talking about cars. And even though he had some complicated stuff about cars that maybe only mechanics would know, he made it really fun so that anyone could listen. Like the remember Click and Clack, the Car Brothers, the Taproot Brothers. They did Car Talk on NPR, one of the most popular shows that NPR ever had. Which I still don't know why they have Kelly McGivers on NPR. She ha- She's so... She's got to get rid of her vocal fry. She's the one that does this. Why didn't he take a knee? Why did he take a knee? She does that kind of vocal fry thing. That's what a vocal fry when you do that kind of thing. Almost you sound like a frog. Or you sound like bacon sizzling. Vocal front Kelly McEvers But Whatever She seems Like she Knows her stuff So she's on NPR And NPR plays A bunch of commercials If this had been An NPR show There would have been A lot more content And a lot less fluff But I think we covered Some important topics today Judy Greer Doppelgangers Portugal the man The year 2000 uh, but the, the, on NPR, so many commercials now. It's all about the NPR is brought to you by blah, blah, blah. When blah, 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 NPR. NPR brought to you by, I listen to a station actually out of Austin, Texas that I listen to through the internet at this NPR station. And it is, there's so many, I had to turn it off. I might as well be listening to AM radio. There's so many commercials. It's the same thing. Only, and they don't have the, it's not all produced. They're just reading stuff. And that is even worse. To, support is brought, support for this broadcast. They say something like that. Support is brought to you by, da da da, Merck. Merck has to do with everything in NPR. Merck is scary. Merck is murky. Hey, I felt that I got all that off my chest and I want to thank you for listening to that and you can chime in and let me know what you think at mikesdailypodcast.com you can email me uh, let's see it's a mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com you can call me 336-MM-DAILY tell me what you think listen to to the point with Warren Olney his last week and especially the last episode was very fascinating because it did talk about what I am doing Media, electronic media, new media, as it was once called, and how the media today, it is being questioned, it is being called fake news, and people do need to realize that some news is all just PR, it's all just promoting whatever. Like me saying, 
So check out mikesdailypodcast.com. That's a bit of PR right there. But hey, I should promote my pod, my website because I pay money for it. And hey, if you it gives you uh, all the things that you need to check out this show. All the past podcast pictures, which today's podcast picture is of the wonderful, beautiful Yosemite Valley and that rock. Half Dome, that's right. It is a picture from five years ago. I was still married. The, uh, what was it? The the Mike's Daily Pod had been on for over a year. I had been podcasting, though, for three years at least. My cousin from Germany, Anne Katrine, was visiting. And we went to the Yosemite Valley. And I will never go back. So much traffic. So Im- impossible to park. You drive... All these hairpin turns, these the, these windy roads, you get car sick, and then when you get to the spot that you want to be at, you can't find a parking spot. And, oh my God, it was hot that day. And I got into such a fight with my ex-wife. Ah, but we did get this nice picture of Half Dome, and you can see it at mikesdailypodcast.com. But, you know, there were parts of that trip that were fun. We stayed at Grove Lake. Which I posted a picture of a couple months ago, one of my one of my podcast pictures, and you can find that at mikesdailypodcast dot com. And the lake was so warm. That's right, it was the Grove Grover Lake. Maybe it was Grover Grover Lake Groverland Lake. I think that's what they call that town. And that lake was so warm, but Yosemite was so crowded, and it's ex- anywhere anything you want to do in Yosemite costs money, and it's expensive. So. They And they can charge those prices because all the Germans come and go there. Because the Germans hear about Yosemite and they're like, I have to check this out. This sounds like so much fun. And I can make fun of Germans because I am a huge chunk of my background is German. My mom and my dad's mom, German. Or no, wait, my grandma's my, my great grandmother on my dad's side, German, <sighs> and I know I'm bisschen Deutsch. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you'd like to help out the show through the Amazon link, there is one at mikesdailypodcast.com. Click on that link and buy whatever it is you're going to buy on Amazon, and that helps us out. Uh, Amazon was not the megalith to coin a word I've used to call this show or title one of my shows. This past week, yesterday's show was called Adamant. And at times like these with a great heaven knows, we wish you didn't have so many plugs for mikesdailypodcast.com. But we do have one more, and that is there's a PayPal if you'd like to help us out that way. There is that at mikesdailypodcast.com. And you'll become a Mike's Daily Podcaster and get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters, such as Floyd the Floorman and John Deere the Engineer. Yeah, we're still here at Cafe anyway. We're enjoying a delicious cappuccino. Mm. That sounds good. I might have a sip of mine right now, as a matter of fact, because that's good content. All right. Hey, time like this with a great heaven knows, we wish we uh, had some interesting news. But apparently... All I got here is that the sex allegations against Roy Moore, the Alabama I lived in Alabama for two years. I didn't really follow politics too much, although I did vote in the 2008 election in Alabama, which meant I voted for the first black president in one of the most racist states in America, Alabama. Well, I call it one of the most racist states due to its history of Ku Klux Klan and all that stuff. So... Is it racist now? I don't know. I met a a lot of non-racists in Alabama, so who am I to say? But Republicans in Washington seemed near panic yesterday in the light of a news report in which four women say that the Republican nominee for the United States Senate seat abandoned by uh, Mr. Jeff Sessions because he became our attorney general. Roy S. Moore, uh, he is also... Identified as an evangelical Christian. That's how he self-identifies. But four women have come up and said that he has had made sexual or romantic overtures to them 
when they were teenagers, like tweenagers practically, and he was in his 30s. Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, of course, the majority leader for the Republicans in the Senate said that Mr. Moore should step aside ahead of the December 12th special elections if the allegations are true. But in Alabama, the fallout was uncertain for a candidate who is considered a hero in some circles for his conservative cultural stances. Mr. Moore, the former chief justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, was twice removed from that office for his positions on gay marriage and a Ten Commandments display. Woohoo, look out for that Ten Commandments display, those Ten Rules that say things like, Don't do adultery, that might hurt someone. On Thursday, he strenuously denied the allegations the women made about him on the, in on-the-record interviews, including in the report published by the Washington Post. I heard that story uh, on um, NPR. They had the author of that report talking about what she got from one of the uh, victims, alleged victims of Roy Moore and it's fascinating to you can probably catch that on the NPR website there I gave them a little plug even though I was talking bad about how they have so many commercials Donald Trump brought his hardline economic nationalism to a summit of Pacific Rim leaders issuing a stern rebuke of trade practices that have harmed American workers but the president also continued to insist his US predecessors are to blame can you his name Rhymes with Obama Is what he was talking about We will compete on a fair And equal basis Gosh How come he always has the worst microphones on him Mr. Trump Okay We are not going to let the United States Be taken advantage of anymore He said in a speech at the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. I am always going to put America first the same way I expect all of you in this room put your countries first. Okay. And I heard his speech that he did where I think he was leaving the uh was it China and he was talking about how China they 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 do so well because uh they've taken advantage of America But That was Obama's fault Basically he was saying So back to that Roy Moore story Steve Bannon You know all about him From Breitbart He compared the accusations against Roy Moore To the release of President Trump's Infamous Access Hollywood video During the 2016 election The Bezos Amazon Washington Post That dropped that dime on Donald Trump is the same Bezos Amazon Washington Post that dropped the dime this afternoon on Judge Roy Moore. Now, is that a coincidence? That's what I mean when I say opposition party, right? It's pure part. It's purely part of the apparatus of the Democratic Party. They don't make any bones about it. By the way, I don't mind it. I'll call them out every day. Ooh, I don't know if he should be attaching his horse to that carriage. But... That's Steve Bannon. That would be wonderful if, like, he got behind Roy Moore and defended him, and then all these accusations turn out to be true, and then Steve Bannon looks like a complete idiot. Well, he already looks like a complete idiot, but it, his credibility gets shot, and people stop going on Breitbart. That'd be wonderful. That's the world I want to live in. By the way, a world we want to live in is... Probably closer than you think because Democrats gained a majority in Washington State's Senate this week. The wonderful, glorious state of Washington securing control of all branches of government in the three states along the West Coast. That's right. Democrats got California, where I am at this point, Oregon and Washington with most mail ballots counted Democratic Prosecutor Menka Dingra won the race in Washington's 45th district over Republican Jin Yung Ling England, a former 
Capitol Hill staffer after a campaign that cost both candidates and a swarm of outside groups nearly $9 billion. Dingra's victory puts Democrats firmly in command of a state that has been trending bluer and will allow the party to pursue a progressive agenda that had been bottled up by Republicans. And what is the thing with the iPhone X freezing off in cold temperatures? It is plagued with a number of issues, the iPhone X. The most recent one being the phone freezing off in cold weather. The issue surfaced on Reddit on Thursday in the iPhone subreddit in a thread titled, The iPhone X Screen Not Responsive in the Cold. What's causing the issue? Light sensors. According to some users, the change in light from indoors to outdoors might be causing an issue. A user going by the name of some weird name with a bunch of numbers behind it stated on the thread, I don't have anything covering the screen, so it can't be that. I don't think it's the cold either because it literally happens as soon as I step outside. Maybe it's the light sensors. Whatever. Hey, when I added that extra chip to my Samsung phone... By the way, the chip I took from an old phone that my ex-wife had that was just sitting in the attic, and I pulled the phone out, and I go, hey, I," because I thought to myself, I've owned Samsung phones before. My ex-wife had one, and she didn't take it with her when she left me, so I think I might still have that Samsung phone. (laughs) I just made her sound like a horrible villain. She didn't, like, you know, she left me, but it wasn't. Hey, so the Samsung phone, she did leave behind, and I found it, and I found that there was a chip in it that I can use for my current Samsung phone. So now I've got added memory to my Samsung phone. But as I added it to my Samsung phone, I discovered all these pictures on there, and one of them that she took of me, where I look quite good, and she might have, you know, used that picture as, hey, this is my hot husband back when we were married. So I'm going to hold on to that picture, and... You know, maybe use that to find a new mate. No. At any rate, it was interesting to find old pictures. Like, it was as if I had found an old shoebox with a bunch of old pictures in the attic. Finally, is the Samsung's next high-end Android a flip phone? What? The flip phone is back? And we can be all like Star Trek again? Scotty, beam me up. That's what he says, right? If bezel-less phones are too boring, feast your eyes on something that folds or flips. Samsung, which has an affinity for high-end flip phones, may be working on a new Android-powered flip phone called the SMW2018. And after seeing some hands-on pictures, says CNET, they say they're kind of jealous. Pictures of the rumored SMWS... WWS that whatever were posted by a Chinese phone tipster called at MMDDJ on Twitter. If Vince in the Bay is listening, he knows that that probably has some significance. Oh yeah, that's month day and then J. I think that's what that means. Uh, the W2018 is assumed to be Samsung's follow up to this year's W2017 flip phone with high performing specs, like six gigabytes of RAM and a Snapdragon 835 chip which means something to some of you. Although you have to scrounge to find a modern handset that isn't shaped like a shingle (laughs) I like that sentence seeing that. Shaped like a shingle There was the blank on a shingle Do you remember that sandwich that your great grandfather ate from World War II? Uh, That's what they called it. It was some kind of a meat that was cooked in a gravy and then put on toast. I think that that's what that was. I could look it up right now, but I don't have the time because as I see now, the show's been going a bit long. So let's wrap this up by saying Samsung and LG have continued making limited quantities of Android flip phones for select Asian countries. Interestingly, still the industry is clearly thirsting for change. At least in theory, phone makers have begun experimenting with flexible display and designs that could fold and bend So basically the whole screen bends. ZTE rushed forward with the Axon M, which has two interactive screens and opens like a book or a tablet. Oh, that's so cool. As we go outside a cafe, anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. I've been hearing talk that the 140 characters is going away on Twitter. I've been hearing that for a long time. 
which I think is going to make us all stupid because we all try so hard to fit 140 characters in. It's taught us all a lot about brevity, which uh, was it uh, Abraham Lincoln that said uh, brevity is the soul of wit or some, but I know Abraham Lincoln was all about brevity during that speech. Uh, was it the Lincoln Douglas debates? And Douglas gives like a two hour speech and Lincoln's was two minutes. Had the crowd riveted. He, he loved brevity. Abraham Lincoln. He was good at it. Unlike this show, which is anything but brief. But Twitter says its system for uh, verifying accounts is broken. Now the company is reconsidering how it hands out its little blue and white check mark icons. They announced yesterday uh, they are pausing all general verifications because of confusion over the policy. The decision comes days after Twitter authenticated an account belonging to the man who organized the summer's white nationalist rally in Charlottesville. Critics attacked the company for a move they said gave credibility and significance to white nationalism. All right. So fix that, Twitter. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. and Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully we'll have a Super Secret Sunday show for you. Oh, yeah. And I think the Super Secret Sunday show this weekend is going to have a special visit from Jarell Name. We haven't had Jarell Name on a lo- in a long time, and I'm sorry about that. Sorry. And I hope you'll excuse me. Excuse me! But Jarell Name, Jarell Name is coming back, so we will have that on the next show, possibly, probably. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and weekend and stuff. Cool. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.